Up next, a peninsula cooter, a large freshwater turtle. He obviously is very ambulatory. <laughs> um, he's moving all four legs very well. All those holes in its shell are from being run over by a car. They tend to, I would say 90% of them will sit like this and let us do what we need to do with their shells. That's cool. Unfortunately, turtles get run over pretty often around here. So the staff at Crow have plenty of experience with this sort of thing. Now back to that brown pelican that came in earlier. It's been given fluids and a bit of time to rest since its x-ray. I like that feistiness. I'm just going to set him down see if he yeah. wants to spread his wings or stand at all. I didn't give him, a, like I said, a good chance to do that. Now it's getting the test for red tide too. I think he is neurologic. Yeah, so I didn't give him a chance to do this, so yeah. I like that he's a red tide. It's just like the others, partially paralyzed, unable to hold itself up. I didn't give him a chance to do this, and now you can see that he's tremoring and not standing. It looks like another case caused by red tide. Dr. Berry helps administer pain medications for its injuries. As far down as your arm can go. It will take months in recovery for the pelican to rebound from the red tide symptoms. And then I usually close up and I'll usually massage and kind of help it work its way down. While Barry and Diane care for the most serious patients, the student interns at Crow get hands-on experience with some of the simpler cases. Even though they live thousands of kilometers apart, it's clear Dr. Barry and Dr. Diane have one big thing in common. Passion for the animals. I love wildlife. Um, and of course, I still love um, seeing dogs and cats as well. But to see an animal released, I think that answers that question. Once you see them get back into the wild, it's well worth it, every minute of it. While Barry has been busy tending to animals, Hope's been talking shop with Steve. And Steve has an idea about how to cap off their visit to Crow. I have a surprise for you. We're going to ask you to hop in and come out with us, and we're going to take you on a release. Cool. He's invited Hope and Barry to witness the final moments of one patient's rehabilitation. Tomorrow, Hope and Barry are planning a sightseeing trip to the Everglades. 
but they can't go anywhere without a wildlife emergency landing right in their lap. Hope and Barry are visiting wildlife rehabs in southwest Florida. They're supposed to go sightseeing in the Everglades today, but a wildlife emergency is about to derail their plans. So Hope and I are driving along the highway. As we're driving along the bridge, right in front of us, we see a pelican in the middle of the road. The cars, two cars ahead of us had run over it. And so we, we stopped. We got out. Um, there were some other bystanders stopped as well. Um, once Hope and I were able to, to catch the pelican, we noticed he had some pretty bad injuries. Um, he had a really badly broken wing and, and also a, a badly damaged leg. And he was in hard shape. He'd been hit bad. But he was still alive and he was he needed help. We thought we got to get him to a wildlife rehab center somewhere and we knew just the place to take him. Hope and Barry are right back at Crow. The pelican's leg is badly broken. It'll need surgery and months of recovery. But it's in good hands now. Hope and Barry would love to hang around and help, but they're already overdue at their next stop. They're still keen to see some sights and check out more of the local wildlife. And this is how they do it in Florida. Captain Bubba isn't just any airboat captain. He grew up in these swamps. He knows the birds and animals here like the back of his hand. Right in front of us, the bird that's up in the tree on the right-hand side, that's a black-crowned night heron. Yeah, there goes a soft shell right there beside oh. us. There's plenty to see, but this is the main attraction. Yeah, he's big. <laughs> yeah, he's a good size. Look at the, yeah. yeah, look at the size of his head. Oh, he's gonna move. He's going. Wow, his head is big. <sighs> All I know about alligators is that. You know, they'll take your arm off or your leg off. It's the things you hear on TV. <laughs> and he's fat. He does look fat. <laughs> That's cool. The first time you see an alligator, they, they don't even look real. They look so prehistoric and they sit so still. And so it's kind of cool the first time you get to see one. They just stay so still. I wonder if they think that we don't see them. <laughs> she knows we're here, right? <laughs> She's enjoying getting warm right now. This radiation from the sun is feeling good. They, it helps them with their digestion. They have fear of humans, but they can get away from you. Oh, I see her, yeah, right there. That was um, last year's hatching this past season. It's about, that's about eight, nine inches long. It's gone a little bit since it was hatched. Usually around one to two, maybe three percent make it full, to full adulthood. You get maybe one or two gators out of each hatching that, that make it through. And uh, that's due to cannibalism at that point. Each other are their biggest enemies along with man. They're tough. That, they've been around a long time, remember? <laughs> it's not, they didn't start yesterday here anyway. 
Captain Bubbo was really knowledgeable. I just wanted to hear everything he had to say. He had a lot of good data in his brain, and I just love listening to people that are well-educated and know what they're talking about. So that was the highlight of the trip, just listening to him. See the nostrils up on top of his nose? You can see the two on this front of his nose there. There's two nostrils. That distance in inches between his eyes, it'll tell you about how many feet. You can just oh, cool. use it for a rule of thumb yeah. deal there. That probably... Three to four inches would be three to four foot long. The teeth at, th at this point, his teeth are still razor sharp like when they were born. Yeah. And uh, when they're born, they can put a stitch on you if you're really? not careful. They really? can put okay. their, their little pins in their mouths at that point. Yeah. Quite pretty, though. Almost like he has a smile on. I know. Yeah. yeah. We have the friendliest gators. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the airboat tour is over, but Hope and Barry are about to see a lot more reptiles. Another wildlife rehab is anxiously awaiting their arrival. This is the Conservancy of Southwest Florida. And this is the rehab's director, Joanna. The animals may be different, but the Conservancy's mandate is a lot like hope for wildlifes. We take care of anything native. We do birds, mammals, and reptiles. We see roughly 2,700 animals a year. Anything native we can take care of, and our goal is to rehabilitate them, get them back into perfect health, and then release them back into the wild. The Conservancy's rehab is going through some growing pains. Hey, mister. It was originally built to handle 500 animals each year. That was more than 30 years ago. Now they're building a brand new rehab because the clinic cares for nearly 3,000 birds and animals each year. And there's more patients arriving every day. Okay, so pretty much I just heard the doorbell. Um, I can figure it out by the timing that it's probably a member from the public. They're bringing in an animal. So what we do is just allow them to come in here to the public area. Hi. Hi. If you can just come on in. Um, don't worry about opening the, door, the box. I'll just right. bring him in in the box. Okay, so if you want to start filling this out for me, please. Um, so what happened? It was... It's this morning we found this uh, in our yard. In your yard? It's okay. actually uh, out by the pool. I had a seagull. had a bad wing. Thank you so much. And don't worry about uh, waiting for somebody to pick up the form. If you want to call for the animal, and stuff he's doing, you can call probably this afternoon or maybe tomorrow. Okay. We'll be fine. Thank you. Um, opening the box, the animal is already stressed with the capture, so let's just avoid any exposure again. We try to reduce the time that they're exposed to humans. Uh, they see us as big predators, and it, that's, that's again uh, putting a, another factor in their health. So the first thing I do is I put them in the scale, and then I want to make sure that I have my subcutaneous fluids. If the bird is crashing, that's probably the ma the best route that I could do. Um, also, they explain that there is there might be a broken wing, so I might want to get some wrap, uh, vet wrap, and any wound treatment that I would require. The Conservancy has a clinic on site, but no vet on staff. So Joanna and the volunteers give first aid to emergency arrivals. He's just really thin, I can tell you that. Yeah. His feathers look horrible. Maybe he's been dra uh, dragging. Oh my goodness, he is so thin. Can you make sure that we have an incubator available? Yeah. He okay, was standing in the box, which is a good thing. And then we're going to check his eyes and his mouth to see if there's anything going on in here. Yeah. Looks pretty good. Feisty. Yeah. Eyes look good. All right, hang on. It's absolutely packed. Every one of these containers holds an animal in need. And he is trying to stand, yet he's a little bit wobbly, so that would indicate that he's a little bit weak, but yet he's moving around more than what we expected. And those are just the animals inside. 